at a bunch of history or just make it up. Remember. On this day, April 25th, 1983, Samantha Smith received a response letter from the Soviet Russian leader Yuri Andropov. In response to her question asking if the Soviets were planning to start a nuclear war, she was invited to visit with the Soviet leader. Sadly, she died, I think it was two years later, in a tragic plane crash. But as an 11-year-old, she had the courage to write to one of the leaders of one of the leaders of one of the most menacing countries we've had in history. If you wrote a letter to a current Russian leader, maybe you should say Putin, what would you say? Oh. Eric Roca, will you come up and deliver this one? Pass. Should I pass on this one? <laughs> have a volunteer. You should probably ask Greg, because he's a political Here person. Yeah, that wall. Come on up, Steve. Let's hear it for Steve. Give him some Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to a few radio shows. Today they're called podcasts. And I learned recently that uh, Vladimir Putin came to power within about a month of, of becoming the, uh, kind of like the Attorney General for Russia. He was brought in under, uh, well, who was the leader at the time? The guy who was visibly drunk on stage all the time right before Putin. As the, the previous leader had been accused of all kinds of corruption, Putin came in as one of his right-hand men, and even though the war with Chechnya had been over for three years, um, and there was really no political reason for Chechnya to start anything fresh, because they had won the war, there were these bombings in several Russian cities, and they weren't like political, they were bombing a political target, they were bombing apartment buildings. And these four bombings killed 300 innocent people at, asleep in their beds. Putin used this as an opportunity to make a fresh war with Chechnya and to stop. And then he was, uh, within a month, he was the president of Russia, or the premier. And then he used his newfound power to stop all investigations into wrongdoing and corruption. The previous Russian leader it stinks very, very badly. So I would like to know what his involvement was in the killing of his power. Thank you. Well done. If you dodged a bullet error, then you can save the day for you. On this day in 1859, ground was broken for the Suez Canal at Port Said, Said joining shipping routes between Asia and Africa. We used to give a speech in support, in support of this monumental project. As a civil engineer, it was kind of close to my heart, a large project of engineering expertise. So I have a volunteer to take this one on. A speech in support of the project. Come on up. Let's name the project. The world was as big as it had ever been. And in the last 160 years since that project, the world has become far smaller. At the same time that they were building that canal, it was, it was completed 10 years later in 1869, the same year that the Transcontinental Railroad was completed here. And just two years later, the, the first transatlantic telegraph was laid, meaning that just in the course of that short 10 years, the United States and Egypt, or the United States and India, went from being weeks and weeks away from each other to being just mere hours away from each other. The telegraph uh, communications being, capable, being possible across yes. that enormous span, um, and then also transportation being shorter and closer to the And those, those events all coming at the same time, all coming so close to each other, laid so much groundwork for all of the things that we enjoy now. All the benefits that we have of being connected to the entire world. Finally, on a personal note, I, I really appreciate the, the Suez Canal because for the grand opening of the Suez Canal, uh, Verdi composed one of his operas, Aida, which is 
one of his greatest works, I think. Um, so I think in very many ways, the Suez Canal is one of the best things that's happened in our history. to do but to try to paddle to the top and get our breath and I grabbed onto this board that just happened to be floating by and I noticed that my brother was over there Rob he grabbed a barrel that was floating by it was dark we had no idea the waves were coming at every turn we just hung on and hoped and screamed and cried out for our family and we just floated we had no idea how many hours went by the next thing we knew there we were woke up on the shore of this island. We had no idea what we were going to find. The first thing I thought was to just look around and see if anyone else was there. And thankfully, there was my dad, and there was my mom, and my brother, and my sister. We were all there. And we thought, where's everybody else? It's just us. We thought maybe a ship might come by and be rescued. We hoped for days. We saved a few pieces of board. They dried up a little bit. We set up fires and flames and everything, but eventually we just decided this was going to be our life. And it was for 28 years. Come back another time. I'll tell you what else happened. 